नमस्कार इन द लास्ट सेशन वी लर्न अबाउट इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक पोटेंशियल एनर्जी इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक पोटेंशियल एंड ऑल्सो वी लर्न अबाउट द इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक पोटेंशियल ड्यू टू अ पॉइंट चार्ज और राइट इन दिस सेशन वी लर्न अबाउट इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक पोटेंशियल ड्यू टू अ इलेक्ट्रिक डायपोल देन अ सिस्टम ऑफ चार्जेस एंड continuous distribution of charge right so let's start so potential due to an electric dipole in the previous chapter we studied about a dipole what is a dipole what is the length of the dipole how do we represent it dipole moment all these things we studied we also saw that the electric field due to a dipole at a point with position vector say r depends not only on the magnitude of r but also depends on the angle between the position vector r and the dipole moment p this is extremely important we have also understood that the electric field falls off at large distances as 1 upon r q in case of a dipole and not as 1 upon r square the electric field due to a charge falls as 1 upon r square so due to a di electric dipole it falls as 1 upon r q now let us see what is electric potential due to a dipole so let us consider a dipole which you have already known what is a dipole what is the length which we consider and all what i want to specify here is center of the dipole let us keep it at origin we have already understood that electric field due to a charge or due to a uh, due to charges or due to a dipole is always obeying the superposition principle so the potential electric potential also obeys the superposition principle so potential due to a dipole is a sum of the potential due to the charges plus q and minus q so let us consider this dipole so this is a to just to remind we have denoted the dipole moment by p the direction of the dipole is from minus q to plus q and the length of the dipole is 2a let me consider the center now this is the center which i am placing at origin let me consider a point p so position of vector of p is r now we are considering here that r is far greater than this a distance a okay in that case what will be the potential at p due to this dipole of course i have considered the lengths here as r1 and r2 so p from q is r1 and p from q minus q is r2 the angle between r and the dipole moment is theta hence the po electric potential at p due to the dipole is given by v is equal to q into 2a cos theta upon 4 pi epsilon 0 r square right now what is this q into 2a that is the magnitude of the dipole moment so that is p is equal to p cos theta upon 4 pi epsilon 0 r square now p cos theta can be written as a dot product of two vectors which one vector p and the unit vector r so i can write v p cos theta as vector p dot r so v is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 p dot r this is a unit vector r upon r square always remember we are doing this we are getting this uh, expression only when r is far greater than a 
Now potential on the dipole axis that is when theta is 0 or pi is given by V is equal to plus or minus 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 P upon R square. Now plus sign is when theta is 0 and minus sign is when theta is pi. So potential in the equatorial plane for any point on the equatorial plane of a dipole the potential is 0 because theta is pi by 2. Now we have to understand if we consider a, a single charge and if we consider a dipole then what are the contrasting features of electric potential of a dipole from that due to a single charge. So let us see the electric dipole potential falls off at large distances as 1 upon r square and not as 1 upon r. In case of a charge it falls off as 1 upon r but for a dipole electric potential falls as 1 upon r square. Now the potential due to a dipole not only depends on R but also on the angle between R and the dipole moment P. Now it should be also understood that it is actually symmetric about P. What does it mean? Say for example if I consider this dipole and this R is rotated about P is rotated about P by keeping the angle this theta same. The angle between the dipole and the R should remain the same and if I rotate it about P then I get the value remains the same value of the potential remains the same that is what we call as symmetric. So for example I will just show you this animation. If I rotate it like this symmetrically then I see that the value of the potential remains the same that means it is actually symmetric. So this forms a cone forms a cone so this way so you can say at all points on this okay edge of the cone the potential due to this dipole will be same. Okay, now let us see potential due to a system of charges. So suppose I consider charge Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, Q5, Q6. I am considering 6 charges. Now to obtain this configuration, this configuration of charges, I have to do work. You remember we had to bring Q1 then I have to do work uh, to bring the charge Q2 from infinity to this point against the electrostatic force of this. Then when I am bringing Q3 these two charges are there. This way I have to do work and that work is stored as its put electrostatic potential energy. So for this configuration I have got one value of electrostatic potential energy but the electric potential at different points is different and not the same. So value of electric potential at if I take it this point, this point, they will be all different from each other. Each point is different. So if I have to find the electric potential, I have to decide about at which point I am finding the electric potential. So say for example at this point P, then this will be the distance of point P from charge Q1. Let me denote it as R1P. Similarly, the distance of point P from Q2 will be R2P. Then distance of point P from uh, Q3 will be R3P and so on, right? So now what will be the potential, electric potential at point P due to Q1, say it is V1. Let me consider the electric potential at point P due to Q2 as V2. 
then electric potential at point P due to Q3 is V3 and so on V4, V5 and V6. So total put electric potential at point P will be sum of all these things because we have understood that it also follows or obeys the superposition principle. So what will be the total uh, electric potential V will be equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3 plus V4 plus V5 plus V6 right now suppose there are n number of charges in general what I'll say it is V will be equal to V1 plus V2 and so on plus Vn hence I can write I can write the formula V is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught into the bracket Q1 upon the distance of that point from that charge what is it r1p plus q2 upon r2p and so on plus qn upon rnp right now if we have a continuous charge distribution with say charge density rho then how do we find potential due to this charge distribution at a point, right? So what we can do is we can divide this ch continuous charge distribution into small, small volumes and then find the potential at a given point due to each of these charged volumes. Then the total, total potential due to this entire charge distribution at that point can be found by integrating over all such volumes. All right. Now, if we consider a uniformly charged spherical shell, then we have seen in the last chapter that electric field at a point outside this charged spherical shell is as if the entire charge is concentrated at the center of the spherical shell. Right? So, if we consider a uniformly charged spherical shell, say of radius R, let us denote it by capital R, then potential at any point outside the spherical shell is given by V is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 Q upon R where this R small r is the distance of that point outside the spherical shell from the center of the shell. All right. Now if we consider the point to be on the surface of the spherical shell, then what will be the potential on the surface of that charged spherical shell? It will be equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 Q upon R, capital R, which is the radius of the spherical shell. Right? Now, we have understood that electric field inside the spherical shell is zero. Now what does that imply? It implies that the potential is constant inside the spher spherical shell. That means no work has to be done to move a charge inside the spherical shell from one point to another. All right, so what will be the value of the potential? inside that charged spherical shell it will be same as that on the surface so it will be equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 q upon the radius of the spherical shell so it is the same as it is on the surface of the charged spherical shell for all r less than the radius of the shell all right so if we plot a graph of right potential v versus r then what type of graph do we get 
here we get a straight line. The value of potential is V is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 Q upon R. Right, where Q is the total charge on the spherical shell. What up to where do we get this value? Up to this point where R is equal to capital R. That means up to the radius, up to the surface of the spherical shell. After that, potential falls as 1 over R. Right? The potential is proportional to 1 over R. Alright? So, as you go away from the spherical shell, the potential falls as 1 over R. Right? Let us understand now what are equipotential surfaces. So, an equipotential surface is a surface with constant value of potential at all points on that surface. Suppose I consider a single charge Q, the potential at a distance R is given by V is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 Q upon R, right? So, say for example, if I consider this charge, say positive charge, then at a distance, suppose I consider at a distance here, the potential is something. Then at the same distance from the charge here, the potential will be same. So, if I describe the, all the points, it will make a sphere around it, right? So, I can say this is an equipotential surface. Of course, while drawing, we have to draw two-dimensional. It will be a three-dimensional figure. So, similarly, at another different point, the potential at all these points on this sphere will be same. Electric potential due to this charge Q on at all these points, right, on the sphere will be the same. So, we call these as equipotential surfaces. So, uh, for any charge configuration, equipotential surface is always normal to the direction of electric field at that point. Suppose the electric field were not normal, not perpendicular to the equipotential surface. Then what does it mean? That, that means it has a component, non-zero component along the surface, right? So if it has a non-zero component along the surface, what does it mean? That means to move a unit test charge against that direction of the component of the field, work would have to be done. If we have to do work to move a charge on an equipotential surface, that what does it mean? That contradicts the definition of an equipotential surface. What is the definition of equipotential surface? There is no di potential difference between any two points on the surface. And no work is required to move the test charge on the surface. If we say there is a non-zero component along the surface, that means we will have to do work to move the charge. That means there is a difference between, potential difference between the two points on that surface, which will contradict the definition, right? Hence, this cannot happen, right? This implies that electric field is always normal, that means perpendicular to the equipotential surface at every point. Okay? So, equipotential surface for a positive charge will be like this, right? There will be spheres. Same way for a negative charge also, there will be equipotential surfaces around. Okay? That's all in this session. See you next time.